Hello everyone, welcome to NAB 2024, winding down to the afternoon hours here out in Las Wages, I mean Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> so we're here at Max Honor all about community and one person that has been a pillar of the community for a long time, as well as co-founder of Camp MoGraph is Mark Sinozia, our very next presenter. Not only is he a pillar of the community, also an amazing artist, and I'll let it, Mark take it from here. Thank you, Matthias. Awesome. Yeah, you can clap, it's fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me, Matthias, Simon, Maxon. Really appreciate it. My name's Mark Sinozia, and I'm gonna be talking about how I use Cinema 4D in my uh, workflow for product visualization. All right, about me. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Cernosia, and uh, I'm the owner and operator at Profanity Creative in Burlington, Vermont. And we uh, focus on doing product visual visualization for the outdoor and lifestyle industries. My background is in skateboarding, snowboarding, and making videos with friends, and so somehow I've been able to take that skill and make a job out of it. So really thankful for that. Started using Cinema 4D many years ago when the MoGraph module came out, I think it's 11.5, and then started uh, implementing some of my 3D workflows into, uh, into my job when I was working at Burton Snowboards. Uh, and when I implemented that workflow, I saw a lot of light bulbs go off through all the different creative directors, product people, uh, product designers, and stuff like that. And so I saw an opportunity to bring this type of work to other brands and, and companies. So out doing it on my own now. Uh, and like Matthias said, um, love being part of this community. Uh, so I am a co-founder of Camp MoGraph, which is another event uh, for the community, and then also something called Monday Meeting for it's uh, motion designers all over the world join a uh, weekly meeting and talk about whatever you want to talk about. So join us there, mondaymeeting.org. We're going to get into, let me do this actually. I'm going to play my show reel for you, and I'm going to play it through the Windows player. It'll be better. Thank you. And shout out to, whoop, shout out to the homie Corey, who sound designed that for me. Thank you, Corey. All right, so quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. We're going to do a deep dive into Cinema 4D's take system and how I use that in my workflow, and then also talking about how I use layers within my workflow and how this all combines to really help complex projects and make complex projects easier to manage and understand. Uh, and then I'll put it all together and show you a bit of a case study of how I uh, did this with Rome snowboards. So what is product visualization, right? Um, nice definition here from the internet. Product visualization is the process of using 3D modeling and rendering techniques to create lifelike digital representations of products. I'll let you keep reading through that if you want. But Honestly, tons of advantages to having product visualization for your, for your brand or your products. It captures those hard to see features and the hard to, uh, hard to explain features and parts that might be internally within uh, your product. It enables rapid prototyping, so if you want to 
do uh, different colorways or different camera angles, uh, stuff like that. It allows you to do a lot of different repetitions fast. Then also creating marketing content while the product is still in development. A lot of the work we do is utilized uh, with CAD files, so working closely with product developers and the engineers, they can be developing the product as we're creating visuals for it. And as that product keeps getting developed, we can make the changes relatively quick and simply on our side. And then uh, by producing all of this marketing collateral, it's going to look consistent and the same across all of your uh, marketing efforts, which, as we all know, is essential. And why is it, why Cinema 4D? Well, for me, it's a very intuitive, easy interface. Uh, I come from more of the video background and just jumping right into it. Uh, I was, you know, a few minutes in, I was already making things move. So, super easy to use. The take system is uh, just a massive thing for me in my workflow. Um, so, the fact that it has that. The layering system, and then, I know we've talked about it before, but the community. The Cinema 4D community, uh, it's just incredible. It's why I'm here. It's why I can do this as a job. I, you know, the uh, other artists in our industry and community are there to help answer questions if you get stuck or just share their knowledge. It's super supportive and I'm really, really fortunate to have landed within this industry and specifically the community. So the take system, it allows for the creation of multiple versions of a scene. So you, in the past, I used to make multiple project files. You know, project file, product A project file, product B. That just gets so heavy. It makes your folder structure expand. All of a sudden, you've got all these project files. If you have to change one thing, it's tough to have it ripple across all of those. So being able to use takes and keep all of that within one uh, project is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Uh, and then also streamline the workflow. So it allows you to, like I said earlier, do rapid iterations, different colorways or camera angles or lighting, um, and you can really fire through those relatively quickly um, for quick turnarounds. And then enhanced uh, productivity. So if you're doing hundreds of products that have multiple colors or uh, you need to render out a, a bunch of different camera angles for you know, the e-commerce or whatever, uh, it just allows you to really streamline that. Layers, uh, I use layers in my uh, workflow as well, again, for the product or project organization. And I know it's not like cool, shiny spheres and all the fun stuff, but if you can have a very organized project, it makes your life so much easier. And if you're working with other artists on this product, or on the project, it's going to allow those people to jump in and really understand where things are and how things work. Um, another thing that I think is a huge, huge, huge thing for the layers is it allows you to optimize your scene when you're animating. So sometimes these animations can get really bogged down and heavy, right? Like you have generators, deformers, lots of things happening, and it might be hard to get real-time playback in the viewport to really you know, uh, smooth out your keyframes and your animations. Using layers, you can disable all of that really quickly and allow you to, again, just streamline your animation process. And then it, obviously the team efficiency, anyone who jumps in will be able to understand. So let's go a little bit deeper into the take system. This is how I kind of set up my projects uh, depending on the scale of it. So here on the left hand side you can see if we're only doing a couple products, I'll just you know, make a, a quick little setup here. But if we have different colorways for the products, I'll, I'll make it a little bit more complex, like this middle one. And then on the right-hand side, this is traditionally how I work uh, with the different camera angles, the different products, and then the different colorways. And one thing you'll notice is this main take is always going to be there for you. That's, I like to call that like your container, essentially. That is going to have all of your objects, everything in it. And then anything that happens uh, within the render setting, I like to make that its own take. So it's super easy to control 
all the render settings of all the childs underneath that. So child and parenting, um, it, you know, just like nulls or anything you do in the object manager, same type of deal here with the take. So this is an animated GIF that I need to hit play, but this will kind of show you how I set up my takes as soon as I like hop into a new project. Um, you can see I make that render setting take. Start, I'll nest that under uh, the, the new take, I'll nest under the render settings, product one, product two, product three, and uh, build out the project like that. Now one thing that I want to make everyone aware of <laughs> is this little button here, this little A, okay? You can see it here on this one too, it's not highlighted, but this one here is your override. If that thing is on, and you start messing with any of these parameters in your project, you'll notice these parameters are now colored like this purplish blue. That means you're in override mode. So if you start noodling around in your project and you don't realize that this thing is on, you can start making a lot of changes that you are not intending to make. So I'm really happy that now these parameters are highlighted in previous versions, when this override was on, you didn't see that highlight, and it, it could get away from you, I'll tell you that. All right, so let's set up some takes. Here, let's see, hello. Uh, there we go, okay. All right, so we're gonna just create a new thing here, and I'm going to just uh, modify this layout just a little bit to make it a little easier for us to see the takes. So I'm going to just bring it over here, dock it on the side. Oh, okay, we'll dock it all the way there. Dock it on the side here, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the layers panel. So it's just easier for us to see, and let's bring all this out. Okay, so here we go. Here's our main take, right? So again, I'm going to create my render settings. Okay, uh, expand out there, little guy. There we go. Okay, so here, this little gear, this is going to list out all of the different render settings. So, likely, you probably already have some of your favorite render settings saved as presets, and you'll be able to find them all right here. So, as you'll see, inherit from parent. So, essentially, any render setting we currently are in, it's this render setting is going to uh, inherit that. So I'm actually going to just, boom, I'm going to say, use that render setting. So now we're committed to that. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to nest this underneath here. Let's go make it a child. There we go. We'll just say product one. Probably won't be able to spell all that great. No, oh, that worked. All right. Product two, okay. Now, I'll just roll with this. All right, so say product two has, you know, colorway one. All right, there we go. Nice, cooler. Uh, and every time you keep nesting, it's in, gonna inherit all of the settings from that original parent. So if, you're, uh, if you just need to modify the colors or something like that, this is a great way to do it. All right. All right, so moving on to layers. Um, there's a few different ways to assign objects, tags, lights, cameras, anything to layers. You can right click and say add to layer. You can drag it onto the layer, a uh, bunch of different ways. And then once you have everything assigned, that's when you can really utilize the layers panel to solo layers, control visibility, control what's going to render, control what you see in the object manager. Uh, and you can add, like I said, material tags. Uh, you can, any sort of tag you can add to a, uh, a layer as well. And what's great about adding materials to these layers is that when your project bloats and you have lots of different materials, in the material manager, you'll actually see on the top, there's little tabs of your layers. So you'll be able to essentially 
find your you know, product one material really quick. All right, so let's set up some layers now here too. Hang on. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna just create a few new layers here. We'll just do like product one. Okay, we'll do product two, product three. Okay, and let's just do this too. Uh, we're gonna just create a, a few basic objects. We'll get the figure in there for Casey. And because we're here in Vegas, we'll use a sphere. All right. OK, so let's just say these are our, our products for right now, OK? So I'm actually going to just delete this stuff out to make it a little bit cleaner. OK, so let's say our sphere is going to be product one, figure would be two, cube three. All right, so sphere. We can drag right onto product one, and you'll see it has now assigned the layer color to this object. We'll do the same thing with product two here. And then an alternative way to assign it would be to click, it, to click on this little icon here, add to layer product three. Alternatively, you can right click, add to layer here. And if you don't have a layer created yet, you can create a new layer. All right, so let's do this too. We're going to create a few materials here. OK, here's a gotcha. You can see how I'm now in product three. If I go into the node editor here and the material editor, you'll see everything's grayed out because our override tag or our overrides are not enabled. And that's fine. This is how I like to work. I don't like to have this thing on. But as soon as you turn that on, you can see everything is now, we can edit it. Alternatively, the way I control this a little bit easier is I keep this off. I'm going to just grab the color. And I'm going to drag it over here and add this color to this take, allowing me to now change the color. We'll make it red, OK? We're going to go, uh, let's see. So if I go back to the main take, again, our main container, you'll notice even with this not enabled, I, can, I have access to all my parameters. And that's because we're in that main take, that main container. Okay. So let's make this a little bit different. And we'll do the same here. Hey -oh. All right, some awesome materials. OK, so let's see. We'll put the cube here. OK, we're going to add all those. It's going to take a second to get the colors in there. All right, so as you can see, in the main take, everything is now on. OK, we have all of our objects visible. Let's, uh, I guess we could just add a light. Let's add a dome light, too, just for funsies. OK, and we'll add, you know what, let's do this, too. We're going to add a layer that's just called lights, OK? And we'll have every, all of our lights live on that, too. So if we want to solo our light, we can. If we want to, let's say, remove it from the object manager so we can't see it, there it is. This is a huge one, lock it. You know, uh, a lot of people will put a protection tag on something so that you cannot move it, edit it, or anything like that. I love to just lock the layer and that you won't be able to touch it or anything. Uh, and it's uh, really visible because you can see where it's grayed out. You can understand that is locked. You'll even see a little lock on that as well. OK. So since I like to build the takes uh, individually, I like to, in this main container, 
turn everything off. I'm going to just turn everything off so I have a clean slate. Now, when I go into product one, okay, we'll go here, we're going to set this up. We're going to say, okay, Sphere, we want you to be here. And you'll see, let me make it a little bit wider. Can I get in there? There we go. So this manager here on the side is great because this is going to show you everything that essentially has been overridden in your scene. Okay, so let's watch the sphere here. I'm going to hit, I'm going to check and turn this on and watch, you'll see here, enabled right now is false. As soon as I change this, it's true, okay? So it's saving this state now to keep it on for product one in this take. Now if I go to product two, everything's off again, you see? Because we have nothing in here. So we're gonna take this, the figure, we're gonna drop the figure in here as well, okay? And same deal, we're gonna turn the figure on now you can see it, it registered it here. And we'll go over to product three. Again, clear scene. We'll drop the cube in for this one and turn it on. OK, so now we've got the cube. So now as we go down the different takes, we'll go from product one, which is our sphere, to product two, to product three. OK, so let's do this too. Let's, we're going to just freewheel it here and add a uh, color way two, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we have our red cube, but what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna uh, grab the material, or actually, let's do this. We're gonna put the cube over here in color way two, and then I'm gonna put the material in here as well. Is two gonna give me the, okay, there we go. So now we're, we're in uh, yellow cube, whereas here, Hey, look at that. Didn't work how I expected. That's all right. So uh, I guess I'll add a different one. There we go. Probably needed to add it to the thing. All right, so colorway two. Why is that not? OK, anyway, that's what happens when I just try to free wheel it. Uh, all right, so you can see how if you're doing a project with lots of products and different variations of things, using these takes is going to allow you to really make that kind of mind map of where everything lives. And then you can understand the different overrides here on the side as well, a roadmap of, of things that have been uh, changed. So let's head back over here. All right, so bringing it all together. So the past couple of years, I've done a lot of uh, product renders for the, uh, the company Rome Snowboards. And we've done all of their bindings, uh, all of their like hard goods uh, uh, for their e-com platform and print ads. Um, and let's see, I think each project has had about 30 bindings with about four or five colorways each. So you can do the math there and see how many different takes are set up for a project like that. Um, but again, it allows you to really find what you're looking for easily, create iterations, and, um, and please the client, right? That's the, <laughs> that's the main point. Uh, but here you can see this is a little bit of my workflow too of how I utilize Substance, uh, Substance Painter specifically, um, within my workflow and how creating materials there and sending it back over to cinema is super, super powerful. And especially now that the new version has the uh, native support for the SBAR files where you can add like, uh, you can do a lot of adjustments right in cinema. Okay, and I do wanna give a quick shout out here too. And let me see if it's here, this little, Substance Live Link. This is uh, made by like an independent developer, um, but it's a really cool. Um, it's a it's a really cool plugin that essentially takes your geometry and your materials, sends it over to Substance, and then in Substance 
has a button here too that says send and sends it back to cinema. So you don't have to export FBX and all the stuff and re-import over, it's doing it all behind the scenes. So big shout out, I forget who the developer's name is, but shout out to you because I love your little plugin. <laughs> uh, so let me see here. All right, so the live demo, I don't have the project file on this with all the different bindings, unfortunately. Um, but I do want to just, um, yeah, I, I guess I will just freewheel it a little bit more. All right, so a few different ways that we can uh, like play around with these takes is I'm going to get rid of this colorway thing because that didn't really work out how I wanted. But all right, let's play with the dome light here. Let's, there's probably a GSG HDRI that I should pull up here. Shout out to GSG. Maybe. OK, cool. How about the content browser? Cool, let's grab this. Throw it in. Oh, look at that. Downloading asset. Perfect. I will say this is what's kind of cool now with the content browser is it does download the assets when you add them to your project file. So in the past, you used the, the download used to be really big because you had downloading all of this extra stuff. Now it's only downloading the things you want. OK. Well, the internet here at NAB is jam-packed, as you can see. We're, we're crushing this bandwidth right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to drop this thing in, adjust it a little bit in each take, and then you can see how that light is going to shift for each one. Yeah, there we go. All right, we'll close this up. All right, so again, in our main take, we're going to go into product one here. I'm going to take the dome light. I want to drag this over here, too. Yeah. You can see now it's added under the objects. Let's make this one really bright. We're going to go over here to product two. We're going to do the same thing, but let's rotate it this time. So let's see, rotate, rotate, there we go. And we'll do the same thing here. Yeah, sick, there we go, all right. So as you can see, as we cycle through, now we're auditioning different lighting setups for our renders. So again, like this is great through the, the development process, especially when you're working with like product developers and other like product engineers that they're super smart, but they don't necessarily have the best maybe creative direction and they don't know what they want until they see it, right? This is a great way to audition a bunch of different lighting setups uh, or different camera angles, anything. But takes are super, super powerful. I know a lot of people sometimes are scared of them. Please don't be. They're very powerful. They're, um, once you kind of understand this little override manager and how you can see everything that is you know, overridden in that take, it allows, like I said, a roadmap of some decisions. So again, very powerful for working in teams and large complex projects. So I know we've got a, a little bit of extra time here, but I want to you know, also ask to see if there's any questions so far. Yeah, so let's set up some cameras. Thank you, Billy. So as you can see here, we also have the ability to assign cameras. So we don't even need to drag a camera over in here. We can actually just assign here in the take system. So let's just make a camera. Lots of cameras. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a camera tag. There we go. Hang on. We'll just click this one here. All right. So let's let's name this one shot or we'll go angle 1. Okay. Let's add another one too. Cool. All right. So let's look through angle 1. It's going to put it right where we are. 
Yeah, sick. That's going to look so good. OK. And then we'll go to angle two. And let's make, we're going to go back to the main take here so I can unlock all these parameters. Because if you noticed, I wanted to maybe, let's go a fisheye or something. But I can't access that. Because I have not assigned it to the take here for any overrides. And I don't have anything enabled here. So once I enable that main container, it unlocks all of these. So let's make this here. We'll look through this camera just to make sure we're super wide. OK, maybe we'll move this down. So for product one, let's use angle one. For product two, let's use angle two, OK? So that's all you need to do to assign it to that take. So now when we go to product one, there we go. The camera has now changed. Product two, now we're on the wide angle. And if you want to, I don't know if will this this might crash it, but we'll see. We'll go to angle two here. OK, it did work. We're good. So it's a great way, again, just to uh, set up a bunch of different shots, angles, or whatnot. Um, and again, if you want, you can assign individual render settings to each take. So a lot of times, if you're doing animation and you have to anim uh, render out specific frame ranges, a lot of times I'll use takes for that and uh, uh, create essentially uh, child render settings with different frame ranges, which would also be really fun if we could actually drag the frame range over into an override and allow that to happen right there. But um, even talking to some of the devs here, um, it might not make the most sense, even though in my head it makes sense to have that. It might get really confusing if all of a sudden you have all these different frame ranges over on the side. So maybe there's a good way for us to solve that. But um, I'm excited to talk with more artists here and, and try to figure out a, a good way for that. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. So a, another great use of this is for swapping materials. Okay, so like for for product one, okay, we're right here. These thumbnails. The classic, the classic, no thumbnail. I just want to make, OK, so this is yellow. OK, so you can see here, product one, we're going to take yellow. We'll put this over into the material, into the overrides. You can see this is here. We can also take this tag and put it over here, too. Just We're going to override it just in this one. OK, we'll make it green. OK, and you can see now in the material, where is it? Uh, base properties, base. You can see now here we have it green in this uh, override. What you could also do is, since we've added the material tag to the overrides, we can actually take this, drop it on here. Now it's blue, and we can see as we flip through, OK, we're back to blue. It's now overridden the green. Uh, so another great way just to like audition different colors, uh, camera angles, setups, or whatnot. So um, very, very powerful for swapping out materials, yes. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I've got. Um, I would love to open it up for any other questions if you do have those. But if not, I think, uh, yeah, a little, sh little short, but all right. all right. Cool. Any questions for Mark regarding the take system or anything else that you might have seen in his demo reel? All right, he doesn't have pugs. Sorry, folks. No pugs here. No pugs. No pugs. Pug, 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 pug. But Mark will be in the back. You know what? How about this? Since we do have some extra time, yeah. what are your favorite three tools in cinema? Ooh, OK. You know, Because people need to know that. Sometimes there's a little thing I always like. I have some lighting tools that I always like to show. But what are some tools that when you show people that they don't know, they're always like, oh, I didn't even know that was a thing? So I'm terrible at UVing. OK. And um, one tip I've found, actually, I'm going to give a shout out to Ryan Talbot for this one. Uh, okay. Shout out, Ryan. Um, is the paint wizard. 
it essentially strips all of your stuff off uh, and creates some better UVs. It, uh, let me maybe try to figure this out really fast. So, we'll create a queue, we'll make it editable so we do have a UV, I mean, we'll see. All right, also the shift C. I mean, that's like a the game commander. changer. <laughs> uh, we'll do paint, wizard, setup. Okay, and you can see we're gonna take this cube. Next, single material mode I normally turn off, but it's essentially, like I said, it's gonna strip the UVs out, it's gonna recalculate their UVs and automatically try to pack it as good as it can. Um, Okay, we'll do that. We'll go over into UV mode. The cube's not going to be the most exciting thing. Oh, you but get the process of it. You get the process of it, and you can see now we have very nice UVs if you want to send it over to Substance or anything like that. But this is a great way to get away from, or to use some of the, autom uh, the automatic process for UVing within cinema. Um, and I use it pretty much all the time. <laughs> UV tool, that's a, that's a good one. I think that's the only way I've ever really worked with UVs. Yes. What um, else you got as far as? The, the other things, and I'm not sure if I have them on, or we have them installed here, but the CV toolbox. Yep. So the Maxon has a bunch of plugins uh, from the Cineversity CV. Cineversity library, for those of you who don't know, you can go to Cineversity within Maxon under the Learn page, and there's a whole suite of tools that have been developed to be able to help enhance your workflow. I think you can just pull that up if you want to jump into the website. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so everybody can know, you can just open up Chrome. Yeah, just Matthias is using it. That's good. Uh, Cineversity. Yeah. But there's a couple plugins in this, or a couple little scripts that are so awesome. Um, one is the Layers Manager, uh, and it allows you just to mute layers all at once, uh, super quick and fast, so you don't have to essentially individually go through um, you know, your layers to turn things off. It's actually a little, I dock it right here and you can just mute and it mutes the whole layer. They also have a fun little script for the object manager as well that has some really great quick buttons like a one button solution to turn off all the all the objects, all the uh, stoplights and, and stuff. So just really some great stuff. It's all comes with your Maxon subscription, yep. right? So uh, just super useful like workflow things that have saved me seconds over year, <laughs> over time that have probably added up to weeks days, if not. Days and weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A little workflow exactly. things like that. Great. Any other tools, anything in your in your favorite MoGraph tools or I mean, some of the stuff, the, the, the particle system, the pyro stuff that, that essentially got released, was that last release yeah, or whatnot? Yeah, the last major release. I mean, that, I used to go into Houdini and stuff like that for specific like uh, uh, pyro things. Now having that all contained here is just insane. It's so good. Yeah. Um, and just like Casey was saying too, like the particle stuff, for the first kind of swing out of the gates with that, with the new particle system, how well thought out it is. I mean, it, it's yeah. great. That's awesome. Mark will be around for the next hour in the back. So, if, oh, here we go. Live question, folks. Hot mic, what do you got? Let's go. Question. Let's go. So the question is, you need to know how to use the override right. groups. Override groups. Uh, the tank you, system. you know, I've never met uh, I've never really messed with that. The good yeah. news is, not only will Mark be in the back, but our trainers are in the back as well, so you can do a deep dive, anything that you can't figure out there, you'll be able to ask them as well. And for those of you online, we have tons of Ask the Trainer sessions. You can check out our news and events section on maxon.net to be able to work with them directly on live events like this, but also just one-on-one -on -one with trainers, which is an also an awesome free resource to you from Maxon. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. We're going to get going here in about the next 15, 20 minutes with our last presenter of day one. You're going to enjoy it, John Jackson. So stay tuned. We'll see you after this break. <laughs>